a lot of things that we've been talking about, I think, um, you know, naturally lead to me to this direction. Um, obviously, we know that the virus that's going around, uh, I was going to say the country, but the planet um, is very specifically affecting black and brown communities uh, in this country. So I'm curious as to your concerns about that, like what you're concerned about happening. And also, you know, before this virus happened, there were a lot of things that were already in place um, in a lot of our communities to, to uh, you know, to not help, I guess you could say. So I'm curious as to um, what some of the things you would like to pinpoint, you know, uh, are um, that, that fit that description. Yeah, I mean, I think coronavirus is something that a lot of our people are not taking as seriously as we should. And I understand I did have a fight why. with my sister. I did have a fight with yeah. my sister about it. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of us have had, especially early on, you know, and now that things are reopening and as much as we want to believe that, well, our people know that the, tr that the president is a liar and he doesn't have our best interest in mind. And so if he's saying reopen the country, that we should know that that's definitely not the answer and that it's not time. Um, but that there are people who take their cues from leadership, regardless of how valid that leadership is, because we are trained to respect uh, the, the law. And so with that, it, it's important that we continue to remember that we are, even if you don't think of yourself as higher risk, one, there were so many people who heard, you know, young people aren't getting it. And they were like, okay, that means me. And it's like, no, when they say young, they weren't talking about 37 year olds. You know what I mean? <laughs> they were talking about seven year olds. Um, two, that even if you are not quote unquote high risk because you don't have, um, you know, any sort of respiratory condi uh, condition or, you know, you are thinking yourself as being in good health, but health and you, you work out and go to the doctor and all that good stuff. One, the inadequacies in the healthcare that we get, even when we do get regular doctor checkups, even when we go to the hospital when something's wrong, you know, there were a number of, of people, and this was something that was reported on more early on, uh, black women in particular that I read about, and also some young black men who went to the doctor with the symptoms, you know, when tests were in short supply and said, I think I have this thing and they were turned away only for them to pass away. Mm. You know, and so when when they started talking about doctors are making pain, you know, doctors are having to make difficult decisions, you know, essentially about who who lives and who dies because they're at capacity and they don't have enough, you know, uh, at one point it wasn't enough respirators, they don't have enough PPE, they don't have, you know, all the things they need to treat everyone. So not everyone's going to get the treatment they deserve. If the studies show that under normal circumstances, black folks go to the doctor and say, I don't feel well and we're not believed. You know, we're told that we have, you know, we're having a panic attack or that, you know, we're hypochondriacs or, you know, um, that, that we're especially just a black woman like much. yourself as well, especially a black woman like myself. And I come to the hospital and I say that and I say, you know, black women die in ERs because blah, blah, blah. And they, you know, they, they love hearing that from me, of course. Um, <laughs> but at the very least, they may be thinking, OK, perhaps she's litigious. And, you know, <laughs> I might want to treat her like something. But um, I consider, I, I think all Black people should think of themselves as extremely high risk between the pre-existing condition that you don't know you have from the ways that we're treated uh, when we have to engage with the healthcare system to the condition of weathering, right? Which is something mm -hmm. that there's not been enough study or investigation into this, but it is something that um, researchers are aware of. And hopefully there'll be a lot more um, exploration of what does centuries of mm -hmm. generational trauma do to the body, right? Like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're in, and what is the sustained trauma in your own life, you know, due to racism, how does that manifest in you physically? So you could be an upper middle class, you know, high earning college trained, um, you know, professional, and you still turn on the news and see people look like who look like you being hunted down by the police, right? That mm -hmm. does something to you. And and I didn't really know much about the um, about that phenomenon about weathering until I started uh, reading more about the Black maternal health crisis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Black women in this country um, who are high earning, college trained, uh, have prenatal care, are three to four times more likely to die. Um, during pregnancy or up to 12 months afterwards than a white, poor woman with a high school diploma who's had no prenatal care. And that's not just about, you know, our weight. That's not right. just about, um, you know, where we live. 
you, Beyonce and Serena Williams both exactly. had life exactly. threatening conditions during their pregnancy. Serena had to diagnose hers herself. She had a blood wow. clot and was not being heard. You know, it was not being heard. And had she not, you know, because she'd had issues with her body before, because she's so in tune to what's going on with her, had she not said, I think this is a blood clot. I think this is what's happening to me right now. Uh, she might not be here right now. And, right. and just imagine us losing Serena Williams, one of the greatest athletes of all time, uh, who has every possible resource available to her, who not only on her own, but she's married to like a billionaire. You know, there's mm -hmm, no mm -hmm. reason that this woman shouldn't have access to the best care, but it doesn't matter because if the best care doesn't hear you or see you or, or understand you, the legacy and lineage that you're a part of. Yeah. Then, or even yeah. just just you're a woman having a baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You well, know? I'm happy that Serena did not die, although I think if she did, a lot of people will have been like, well, what was she doing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like blaming it on her somehow. Um yeah, that brings up a lot of different things because, you know, you talk about uh, intergenerational trauma and I feel like the study of epigenetics is sort of starting to kind of make that make more sense to me and how it actually expresses itself in our genes. And then also you're talking about weathering, obviously. Now, I know that stress makes people sick, right? It right. compromises your autoimmune system. It's the right. uh, chemical cortisol. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. Uh, it might be stressful a little being black. Uh, it might be stressful a little being a woman and it might be stressful a little being a black woman, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's like you have a lot of that going on. Hmm, yeah. Maybe all of those things contribute. Uh, well, my goodness, what a great talk, Jamila. I'm so happy to have had you here. Um, Mike, you want to say thank you? I don't know. I, I, I prompted him. Mike doesn't usually say thank you. So Mike, please. <laughs> but in this, this time, case, <laughs> this time, okay. I must, but you know, uh, just, just to a, a near and dear friend, it's, it's wonderful to have you on. And I just want to thank you for being so wise and so passionate for so long and never giving up and, and, and helping see all of us through and communicate with us to help us process these moments. We appreciate you so much. Well, thank you for having me and congratulations on the show. This is really dope. Oh, thank awesome. you very much. Uh, that's Jamila Lemieux, everybody. She is a writer and a cultural critic. You've seen her work in Essence, Playboy, Wired, and The Nation. Please follow her on all the social places because she's got stuff to say. And, uh, you know, I have learned a lot from her. Uh, thank you again for being here.